Okay, in this video, uh, we're going to determine what the graph of the sine function looks like uh, based on the values that we know from the unit circle. Okay, so uh, what do we know from the unit circle? We know, so here's our unit circle here, and we know that if we have a point uh, on the unit circle that we get from an angle theta, okay, so here's our angle theta in here, um, that's going to give us a point on the unit circle, and we know that uh, since we're on the unit circle, the x-coordinate of this point is the cosine of theta, and the y-coordinate of that point is the sine of theta. Okay, so in this video, we're going to do uh, the sine, and then in a separate video, we'll do the cosine. So we don't care too much about the x-coordinate of this point, because that's the cosine of theta. But we do care about the y-coordinate, because that's the sine of theta, that's what we want to talk about now. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, use those uh, y-coordinates and the corresponding values of theta to get the graph. Okay, so uh, let's zoom in a little bit, and then come down to check out this animation that we have. Okay, so here we're going to start running an animation that's going to show us, uh, as we go around the unit circle, um, what are we going to get? What's our graph of the sine function going to look like? Okay, so I know these labels here might be kind of hard to read. Um, that's all right, they're not really critical. Uh, this just says uh, theta equals zero radians equals zero degrees, because uh, that's where we're starting the animation. Um, and then x comma y equals cosine of theta comma sine of theta, because remember we're on the unit circle, so the x coordinate is the cosine of theta, the y coordinate is the sine of theta. Um, and for this particular value that we're starting at, it's uh, 1 comma 0. Okay, so we're starting at the point 1 comma 0. We're going to go all the way around um, one complete revolution of the unit circle, and then we're going to see what we get, uh, what, uh, what kind of shape we get traced out over here. Okay, so uh, let's start running the animation a little bit, then we'll stop and we'll talk about what's going on. So when we start, uh, we're going to get something like this going on. Okay, so let's stop. Now what's happening here? Okay, so here... Um, well, let's run it a little bit more, and we'll stop right here, okay? So here, what do we have? Here's our theta, okay, which is uh, 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, okay? Here's our theta, pi over 2 radians. So uh, we know that um, when theta is pi over 2, uh, cosine of theta is 0, but again, we don't care about that for this video, so let's just talk about sine. Uh, sine of theta is sine of pi over 2, which we know is 1, okay? So what's happening over here on this uh, graph? Well, on this graph, here's uh, pi over 2 right here. So again, I know it's kind of hard to read, but pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Okay, so when uh, theta is pi over 2, we know that the sine of theta is uh, 1. Okay, so how do these graphs relate to each other? What's going on? Well, over here, it's just a unit circle. So we have an angle theta and an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, where x is the cosine of theta, y is the sine of theta. Over here, we have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, but here x is theta, okay, the x-coordinate is theta, and the y-coordinate is sine of theta. Okay, so uh, we want to keep that in mind that theta over here is actually the x-coordinate over here on this graph. Okay, why, why are we doing that? Well, because we're graphing uh, the sine function, and sine really is a function of theta. Okay, sine is a function of the angle theta. Okay, so we want to take uh, the theta value over here and put that on our x-axis. Okay, so we're going to graph sine as a function of this uh, x-axis variable. Okay, so sine is going to be graphed as a function of theta. Uh, like this. Okay, so over here theta is an angle, but now what we want to do is take theta, think of that as an x-coordinate, and then use that x-coordinate to get a y-coordinate uh, so that we can plot the graph of this function here. Okay, so that's all that's going on here. And we're running this animation here to see how these graphs relate to each other, um, how when we go around the unit circle, uh, we're going to get all these different values of theta. Okay, and all the values of theta that we get here correspond to all these x-coordinates over here. And then we're going to see, okay, what uh, y-coordinates do we get? What values of sine of theta do we get? Okay, so this up here just says x comma y equals theta comma sine of theta. Okay, because on this graph, again, the x-coordinate is theta. Okay, so x comma y equals theta comma sine of theta. Uh, and then this here is just uh, pi over 2 comma 1. Okay, so when uh, the x-coordinate, when theta is pi over 2, we know that the y-coordinate sine of theta is 1. Okay, so let's uh, continue the animation, go all the way around and see what happens. So if we go all the way around, so there we pass through pi, 3 pi over 2 comma negative 1, and then we stop at 2 pi comma 0. Okay, so we just went all the way around one complete revolution on the circle. So let's do it again. We'll do the whole animation uh, sped up a bit when we won't stop it. Okay, so pi over 2 comma 1, pi comma 0, 3 pi over 2 negative 1, and then 2 pi 0. Okay, so again, we trace out this whole, uh, the entire unit circle, one revolution, and we see that this is the shape we get, okay? So, um, and again, theta over here, so let's go a little bit and then stop. So again, theta over here is the same as the x-coordinate over here, okay? That's really important to keep in mind is that, and again, why are we doing that? Because we want to graph uh, sine as a function, 
and the, the sine function really is a function of the angle theta. So we're just going to take these angles and uh, slap them on the x-axis here so that we can see, okay, we know what these values uh, are. We know what the values of the sine function, we know what they are. Um, but now let's just see what they look like if we put all these uh, x-coordinates, all these theta values on the x-axis here. Okay. And again, that's what's going on here. Okay, so um, we talked about a lot of properties of sine and cosine and things like that. So what was one of the properties? Um, one of the properties was that uh, sine and cosine both are uh, 2 pi periodic, right? Which means they have period 2 pi, which means after 2 pi units, um, everything starts repeating, right? So we know that when we go one complete revolution around the unit circle, um, we're going to get the same sine value, the same cosine value and all that stuff, right? So how does that, what does that mean for the graph? Uh, over here. Well, what that really means is that after 2 pi units, the same pattern is going to repeat. Okay? So we're just going to get this same thing again if we keep going uh, past 2 pi. So let's see uh, an animation of that. So we're going to do another animation. Let's ignore all that. Again, more labels that are probably kind of hard to read, but don't worry about them. Uh, so here what we have is pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, uh, 5 pi over 2, 3 pi, 7 pi over 2, and 4 pi. Okay, so now we're going to see what this animation looks like if we go all the way out to 4 pi. Let's go ahead and start that. Okay, so just like before, pi over 2, 1, pi 0, 3 pi over 2, negative 1. Okay, and then 2 pi comma 0, so I went uh, too far a little bit. Um, so let's go back here. Okay, so here's where, this is as far as we went before, right? We stopped at 2 pi in that other animation. So now we're just going to go around one more revolution on the unit circle and see what happens. Well, we kind of know what's going to happen because we talked about it. We know from the periodic property, uh, we're just going to get the same thing back. Okay, so uh, the same exact pattern is being traced out. Okay, so the same thing would happen if we kept going, uh, so 2 pi, 4 pi, if we kept going out to 6 pi, the same exact thing would happen. Uh, 8 pi, 10 pi, 12 pi, 14 pi, and so on. Uh, the same thing is just going to keep happening. Okay, so the sine graph really goes on forever in that direction, um, and it's just going to keep looking the same way. Okay, well, uh, so you know, we're talking about going in the positive direction. What if we go in the negative direction? What's going to happen? Uh, the exact same thing, right? So let's see uh, animation of that. Ignore all that. More labels that are hard to read, but don't worry about them. Uh, okay, so let's uh, center that a little bit better. Okay. Uh, so let's start this animation here. So we've been going counterclockwise around the unit circle. Because remember, counterclockwise is the positive direction. So we've been talking about positive angles, uh, positive values of theta, which correspond to positive x-coordinates. Because remember, theta over here, that's the x-coordinate over here. Now what we're going to do is go in the negative direction, the clockwise direction, and get negative values of theta, which correspond to negative x-values over here. Because remember, theta here is the same thing as x on uh, this graph here. Okay, so here's a negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 2 pi, negative 5 pi over 2, negative 3 pi, negative 7 pi over 2, negative 4 pi. So let's start this animation. Okay, so notice it really is the exact same shape, right? It's just we're tracing it out backwards now. Okay, so we're going to stop it at negative 2 pi and see um, how it compares. So maybe we can speed it up just a bit. Okay, um, skip to the, all right, so here, so once we stop at negative 2 pi, we see we have that exact same shape, right? Um, just we trace it out backwards because we're going in the negative direction. And we notice that here uh, we're going in the clockwise direction, which is the negative uh, direction. Okay. And we do really do get that exact same shape traced out. Um, so that's how we get the graph of the sine function, just by going around the unit circle in the positive or the negative direction, looking at, uh, remember, the theta values over here. Theta over here is the same thing as x over here. Okay. And... Uh, sine of theta, okay, sine of theta is the y-coordinate here, and it's also, uh, so it's the y-coordinate here because that's just how the unit circle works. Cosine of theta is the x-coordinate, sine of theta is the y-coordinate, and sine of theta is the y-coordinate over here because we're graphing uh, the sine function, okay, we're graphing sine as a function of an x-coordinate, okay, so theta over here is x over here, and uh, the sine of theta is our y-coordinate here, and we get those from the unit circle again, okay. So uh, notice it's just the exact same shape, just in the opposite direction. Okay, so I, what I mean is we're going in uh, the negative direction now, but we really do get the exact same shape, right? This exact same shape we had. So combining all of that together uh, really does give us, let's zoom, uh, scroll down a little bit. 
So um, this is what the graph of the sine function looks like. You know, we just found out. So here's a zero pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi, five pi over two, three pi. And it just goes on uh, infinitely far to the right. And here's negative pi over two, uh, negative pi, negative three pi over two, negative two pi, negative five pi over two, negative uh, three pi, and so on. Okay, so infinitely far to the left also. Okay, so this is what the graph of the sine function looks like. Uh, here, max value one, min value negative one. So again, infinitely far to the right, infinitely far to the left. Uh, this pattern just keeps repeating. And again, uh, it's every, so it's, since it's uh, two pi periodic, the period is two pi. Um, after two pi units, okay, everything just repeats. Okay, so this right here, um, that's one period. So this just repeats uh, every two pi units. We get the same pattern here. Okay, so that's what we saw in these uh, animations up here. Um, and that's the graph of the sine function. And uh, in the next video, we'll talk about the graph of the cosine function, which is really all the same, pretty much. Um, just here, we were looking at the y-coordinates. Let's scroll back up a little bit. Uh, we were looking at the y-coordinates on the unit circle, and that's we use those to get the graph of the sine function. Uh, but now what we're going to do is, uh, in the next video, when we do cosine, we'll look at the x-coordinates. So that's really going to be the only difference. Okay, so that's coming up next.